Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Bottoms up, right? Today, we are joined together because I would like to talk about a recent film that I watched called We Met in Virtual Reality. It will probably be here on the screen somewhere. I don't know, right? Hey, I just got hair in my mouth. Fuck. That's my own hair. It's so goddamn long. Jesus. All right. <clears throat> That's an outtake. Maybe not. You know, depends on whatever the hell I feel like doing. But yeah. So, for those of you in VR chat, it's been like maybe not even a full year, but like it's been a handful of months since HBO Max released a um released a uh, documentary that showed up at what a Sundance festival or some shit like that. Let me move this fucking this drink shit out of here <laughs> a sundance festival or something like that uh it was a documentary called we met in virtual reality right it was pretty interesting right you know um and i want to talk about it <laughs> this is very i am so not used to doing things in vr please deal with me for the time being um oh shit let me put that up so i don't fuck up my camera right so it was a documentary. I believe, I, I think in the own, I, I'm paraphrasing here, you know, paraphrasing. I believe in the own words of the uh, director himself, you know, creator, director, whatever. He said he wanted to fucking look into like the social aspects of virtual reality and like how that affects people and stuff like that. That was in like his own video that he made like while well, like when he was entering the documentary into um into the festival or whatever but what it actually is about is three couples right three separate couples and they um oh shit hello arm why'd you do that <laughs> three separate couples and they um you know they basically go into their relationships in in a sense you know relationship as in like lovey-dovey type shit you know and how they met in virtual reality and, you know, and the effect, this quote unquote effects of that. Basically, I, I don't know how to explain this movie, honestly, besides saying it's just a video where we check out three relationships of people who are in VR chat, because <laughs> this is kind of like a review discussion type video, you know, um, and it's really hard to talk about because I don't feel like this is a documentary. It's, it's described as a documentary, but it never feels like a documentary, albeit for like maybe the first couple of minutes, first 10 minutes or so, something like that, I, I think. That's when I think it feels the most of a documentary. Everything else feels kind of like, <laughs> kind of like one big video, you know what I mean? Um, so I guess, how the hell, how the hell do I explain this? For the long and short of it, right? Let's let's get to the short of it real quick. If you're coming here to be like, hey man, I played VR chat or I saw VR chat or something like that, and I saw this thing called We Met in Virtual Reality, and I want to watch it, is it worth the watch? Is it something that, you know, that I'm willing to sit down and spin a uh spin a uh, what you call it? Like a uh <laughs> spin like um an hour and a half on, right? <laughs> and it's like if you're someone who likes VR uh, chances are, chances are you're gonna, you know, you're gonna watch it regardless. If you like VR chat, you're gonna watch it regardless at, regardless at some point. If you're someone who's not invested in VR chat, all I can say is like, all I can really say is, uh, is it a waste of time? No. Is it a much watch like Tiger King or something? Absolutely not. Uh, do you learn anything from it? very little <laughs> you know i uh, i really don't i really don't know how to how to explain this it's it's a weird feeling and for those who watch the movie you kind of you can kind of understand where i'm coming from so is it terrible no are there parts that are kind of cringe yes uh <laughs> and but are you going to have a bad time the entire time <laughs> <laughs> and that's the short of it, right? 
that's the short side of things um <laughs> I, I really it's really hard to kind of just talk talk around it without going into it for those who haven't seen it so you know if you're just here for like a general viewpoint is it worth the watch you got an hour and a half to spend and you really you really just want to do something like like and you really just want to check it out go ahead it's not gonna hurt uh if you're someone who's like my time is of the essence and it's important absolutely not (laughs) right uh okay so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this right because there's only so long i can talk around the subject without talking about the actual subject so and we met in VR, uh, and I want to call it we met in VR. I'm just going to call it we met in VR because you, you get it, virtual reality. And we met in VR. Um, we follow the story of three different, uh, you know, three vastly different. Vastly? Oh, maybe that's a understatement. <laughs> three interesting. That That's a better way to phrase it. Three interesting relationships. Vastly different, not so much. There's only one that's really vastly different out of the three. Um, and I'm going to have to look up their names because I remember like three of the names out of the six. So I remember the ones that everybody remembers, you know, (laughs) the ones that stick out the most, uh, fuck. Give me a second. I'm going to look that up real quick. Okay. I have looked up the names, you know, um, I'm not holding my, uh, my controller. <laughs> I'm going to read these names off of the phone because, uh, you know, uh, I, I really just, I really just, uh, don't remember shit. All right. Anyways, uh, we follow the, th- uh, we follow three, uh, <laughs> we follow three, I'm a giggly bitch. We follow three separate, uh, you know, couples throughout this, uh, adventure of the documentary, right? And when I say documentary, I really mean, I really mean it in air quotes, honestly. It doesn't feel like a documentary. Um, so we follow the journey of, uh, the journey? <laughs> Not really. We follow, um, God, these names. <laughs> I gotta pair them up. We follow Jenny and Raya's death. Um, these are their usernames, of course, right? The stories of, uh, Jenny, Raya's death. It's your boy and dragon heart. It's your boy. Haha. <laughs> and um, toaster and dust bunny, right? I'm gonna put my phone down now. <laughs> Holding that thing while I'm in VR doesn't feel comfortable to me. Um, yeah, we follow those guys, right? And when it comes to dust bunny and toaster, dust bunny's a dancer. I'm pretty sure you all know who she is by this point. Kind of a kind of one of the big names in VR chat if you know about VR chat, right? So, uh, Dust Bunny and Toaster, we follow their story. She's a dancer. Toaster's a guy who met her through her dancing class, I think, I under- if I understand it well. Um, we also follow uh, Dragonheart and It's Your Boy. Dragonheart is a VR... I don't want to say stripper. <laughs> I really don't. Um, VR dancer, I guess. Uh, club dancer. I don't feel like... I mean, it is striptease dancing, but like it, it doesn't... I don't feel like, you know, there's a stripper thing, but that's basically uh, like, is basically what it is. Right. Um, you know, and it's your boy is, I mean, his name pretty much sums up his entire personality right there. And then maybe that's too much of a harsh thing to say, (laughs) but you know, it's your boy. Uh, I gotta, I gotta also preface this by saying, um, by any chance, if any of these guys are watching this, you know, and just in general, when I, you know, when I crack jokes, I don't mean to make fun of anybody or nothing like that. They play VR chat. I play VR chat. I understand what they're, you know, I understand, you know, what it's about, right? I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to say I'm better than them because I'm obviously not. You know, once we all enter VR chat, we all become degenerates. So <laughs> that's just how it goes. Um, but yeah, we follow uh, Dragonheart and It's Your Boy. It's, I re- <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I really, it's really hard. I'm trying to describe them within the context of the movie itself. And when it comes to Toaster and It's Your Boy, you really don't get much about those two, honestly. You get more about Dust Bunny and Dragonheart. Um, and also the other couple is Jenny and Raya's death. And that one is definitely one of the most stick out ones of the whole entire film. If anyone, if you ask anyone who watched it, they will definitely say those two stuck out 
and you know it's uh <laughs> how do i say this kind of a con uh, content warning here there's gonna be talk about like you know about attempted suicide and death in the family and stuff like that you know and well i'll talk about it when i get to it right so let's just go to uh the general sense of what this movie is um so we follow these three couples right and i mean that's wow that's really the basis of it we follow these three couples we really don't learn who we learn a lot about one couple in a, and you know compared to the rest but <laughs> there's really not much about this so how how do i pace this all right let's start with why i say it doesn't feel much like a documentary so usually in a documentary right you um you film it through the most neutral way possible right and the uh, most neutral viewpoint right and that's usually a good thing and you would assume it would be a good thing for for this as well well that's the thing that's one of the main things that makes it feel not like a documentary and more like an extended TikTok video. Um, because there's really no sense of like the viewpoint is so neutral that it doesn't feel like a viewpoint in a sense. It feels more like a cameraman was wandering around and just hung out with these guys in the corner while they talked about their lives and it felt so disconnected that is probably the biggest describer i can use here disconnected in a sense right and when it comes to virtual reality especially when the topic at hand is talking about how you know it affects us socially and emotionally and all and mentally and all that good jazz when you film it so neutral like that like the director doesn't talk at all throughout this there's no narration there's no nothing right there's just a bunch of like b-roll and um and just having the cast themselves talk at the camera right and then there are some moments of like very cheesy shit <laughs> to say the least um <laughs> but like that's it when it comes to vr chat i personally again this is all my opinion i personally feel like that if you're gonna film it you have to film it from some sort of viewpoint from some sort of angle where in a sense that it's like if you're someone who's in vr chat view it from that viewpoint of course don't you know pick sides and say see guys this is really good for us you know um still remain neutral but film it from the viewpoint of someone who's in vr chat or if or even better you should have just filmed it from the viewpoint of someone who doesn't play vr chat that doesn't know mo most about vr because the re like how it is so neutral like it handicaps it so much because if i'm someone who didn't know shit about vr i would just look at this shit and be like what i don't i don't get this is this they're in virtual reality but is it a game is it it, it seems like a social space but like you know um like like it seems like a uh <laughs> if i was someone who didn't play vr i on the best descriptor i can use if it seems like a fleeting dream once the movie's over i'm not gonna remember what the hell i just saw and i'm not gonna retain any of the information the only thing i'll probably retain is that like in the beginning of the movie um there's like this whole uh you know you see the vr community come together and they're like we're showing off the worlds that we made this week and you know you see a bunch of people in a car driving and you're like oh that's very practical that's actually very cool you know and besides that maybe seeing you know hearing people talk about you know how coronavirus or whatever affected them and how vr chat helped them and that's pretty much the give uh, the takeaways from this if you're viewing this from someone who hasn't experienced vr that much or anything like that and doesn't know that much if you're someone who experienced vr chat you're watching this and you're like you're like there's so little happening most of the time you know in a sense where it's like beyond beyond the statement of these oh shit i just hit my microphone how far am i in my room oh my god i've been moving up a lot but um <laughs> in a sense of like when they say we're gonna follow these couples 
that's all that really happens. We're gonna follow these couples, which, which brings like the biggest annoyance for me possibly throughout this whole thing is that, again, if your focus was to look at the social aspects and the uh, and how this affects us in virtual reality, you don't do that at all in this movie, in this film, in this documentary. There's no documentary happening here. It doesn't feel like it, right? It feels like I'm watching a stripped down version of 90, what was it, 90 Day Fiance or something like that, you know? I don't know these people. I don't know anything about them, right? And, and that, like, that statement in itself right there is probably something that a lot of people are throwing their arms up right now going like what do you mean you don't know about these people what about the big the big moment that happened right and it's like i'm gonna talk about that right so when i get to that just bear with me but anyways um you know you, you look at these uh like you don't none of the important questions are asked here you know no questions are really asked here honestly right it's just it feels like it's just going through the motions in the in the sense of the you know in the bigger sense of everything like there's no like there's no like even if you're following these couples there's no real statement you're trying to make here or a question you're trying to ask in this documentary i don't learn anything from this right you know as both someone who's played vr chat and even as someone who doesn't play vr you don't learn anything from this you don't get anything from this right and that's a big problem with it so <laughs> let's uh let's go down the list and the characters right um quote-unquote characters my bad the cast i guess uh there's only one sense of the way where i can really use the term character when it comes to this and <laughs> and man it, it is a it is a it is a hot topic i guess but um <laughs> So, uh, let's focus on, real quick, let's focus on Dust Bunny and Toaster, right? So, Dust Bunny, right? She's a, she's a dance instructor in VR, in VR chat, and it's pretty, you know, she's pretty cool, right? I mean, once I get full body tracking, I know I'm gonna visit those worlds and see if that's for me or something like that. Like, why not? It's, it's a cool learning experience, right? You know, and what we really learn about her is that she's a dancer in VR chat dance instructor right and she want and she wants to uh she wants to pretty much make a living teaching people to dance in VR you know and if she can't make a living off of it she at least wants to bolster that community and just have people come together over something that she really likes which is nice right I like that I like that a lot and that's all you really get from her <laughs> You know, uh, she's kind of you. Under, you uh, later on, you kind of get the sense that you know she's kind of more of a you know she's a goofy like person. You know, very lighthearted, very cheerful. You know, and then they point over to Toaster, and they're like, Toaster is Toaster is the boy. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of what they do there. And the most you learn about Toaster is that uh, for like a year or a year and a half or something like that, when he came to VR chat, he was pretty much mute. He never really, you know, and um, by the way, it's just a passing thing that he mentions, right, is that he was pretty much mute. And then, you know, in your mind as someone, let's say I'm someone who never watched VR, you're like, oh, so you mean that like in real life you were mute or something? It's like, no, 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 no. In the context of VR, he just never used his microphone. I think that's what the context was there. But since if you're looking at this from someone who hasn't played VR chat, you don't know that. You don't know what the you don't know what the fuck that means, right? Um, but you know, he's pretty much mute until he met until he met Dust Bunny, and that was the thing that made him go like, okay, if I log on, I want to talk to her. I want I want to make friends and relationships here in VR, and that's someone that I want to do it with. And that's pretty much all you really get from him. Um, throughout that, the big the big takeaway from this is that. You know, each couple is having like, well, I'm not sure if they said it for like Ray and Jenny, but um, they didn't really bring up how like how long distance they were, if they were long distance at all. But when it comes to Dust Bunny and Toaster, um, you know, it's a long distance relationship and they're they're the couple who actually met each other in reality before. Right. In the real world. 
and they can't wait to see each other again. And that's pretty much everything you get from them. There's really not much going on there. And, you know, it's a, you know, it's just regular people, right? You, it's a documentary. There's not supposed to be action and crazy things like that. But that's pretty much the takeaway from there. And you're like, okay, well, if that's the takeaway, tell me how this affects you or something like that. But that doesn't even really happen. All you get is that, you know, they, you know, they understand that some people won't understand the, the you know, the, um, like how the workings of this relationship, right? They understand that they're definitely like, you know, um, on the forefront of a new type of like social gathering and that, you know, general people just won't, in general, most people won't understand. And from that, they just can't wait to see each other again. And that's pretty much all it is, right? That That's all you get from those two. And there, I, I'm trying, I'm really trying hard to think like, what else did we take away from that couple? And that's it, really. And the rest of the time that they're on screen, it's either them talking about how much they love each other, which is great, or it's them doing like these goofy, like these super directed, like, like chase each other around the corner, you know, tap you on the shoulder. Oh my God, there you are, right? <laughs> you know? And that's another thing. If the viewpoint for this documentary was supposed to be neutral, right? Why are there moments of just like heavily directed shit? <laughs> you know like i would love to sit down and talk with these people at some point and you know you know what's really funny actually um <laughs> i don't i like i i'm not sure about this 100 percent, but i think i might actually have some of these guys on my friends list i think i've actually talked to them within the past week and just didn't realize who they were uh <laughs> until after i you know after i watched the uh documentary and i was like wait a minute those names are familiar and then i looked at my friends list and i was like i was like oh my god i gotta talk to these motherfuckers <laughs> right <clears throat> you know or it can just be a coincidence i i honestly think i do have toaster on my friends list i'm i'm pretty sure that's toaster um you know so at some point, if I can sit down with them, I would like to sit down with them and talk to them and, you know, and basically do like a follow up on, on, you know, what the hell this documentary was. But anyways, um, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a giggly bitch. Um, anyways, it's like, that's all you really get from them. And there's really not much else to talk about there there's no questions asked or anything like that so then we move on to uh it's your boy and dragon heart and again if i crack a joke it's not to be mean but if there's any moment in time where you just want to like cringe <laughs> because like for some like let's imagine a normal person's going through uh hbo max and you see it and it says we met in virtual reality and you look at the thumbnail which looks like a fucking bootleg youtube video like discounted thumbnail or whatever <laughs> like like i'm not that good with youtube and even i made better looking fucking thumbnails and shit and it's like <laughs> you look at it and you're like oh oh this doesn't this doesn't look good <laughs> right and if there's ever a moment to just like hard cringe if you're someone who doesn't understand the art chat is when you go all right here we're going to talk about the story of dragon heart and it's your boy <laughs> and it's like what i'm sorry did i hear you right and it's like it's like oh no the username is it's your boy and it's like <laughs> it's like someone had to be the one someone had to be the one right someone had to be the one that you just point to and you go that's that's the one right there <laughs> you know what i mean right like of course again you got you know you got dust bunny toaster jenny ray you know and and even dragon heart like i i'm pretty sure no one would like you know look at dragon heart and go look at the name dragon heart and go and go oh man that's a username but then it's like and we're talking about it's your boy and i'm like and i'm like i'm like someone had to someone had to it's someone, someone had to be the one <laughs> you know again i'm just making jest here but it's not to offend anybody or nothing like that i mean my username is fucking firestorm like i'm not any better but still <laughs> it's like if someone's like we're gonna look at the relationship of fucking of, uh, oh, I don't know, of Jennifer and, and fucking Magnum Dong Lord. 
you know but anyways <laughs> i'm not any better you know but it's just it's just one where like the first time you hear it you know you're like what <laughs> you're like you're like that's the most non-name name <laughs> But yeah, we follow those guys, and Dragonheart is a... First of all, the way they introduced them is kind of, It was really confusing, honestly. Because it starts with, like, um, kind of like the... I'm going to say strip club, because that uh, that's the easiest way to describe it. But I, again, I don't feel like it's really a strip... I mean, it's virtual reality. Like, I, I don't... To me, I, I just got it as, like, a, a club type vibe. I didn't get it as, like, a strip club type vibe. But what do I know? I've never really been there. But it starts with, you know... I guess the manager of the uh, of the club talking with her employees and she's all like all right yes queens let's get it and oh by the way here's another thing uh I would really just want to know in general how comfortable were these people during uh the entirety of this because like you can like there are definitely moments where it feels awkward <laughs> and that's probably one of the ones that where it felt kind of awkward and forced maybe they just weren't comfortable around the camera or something like that i'm not really sure uh but just like it starts out and it's like yes queens let's get it we're gonna get ready to you know dance or whatever like that and you know there there is a genuine moment where it's like all right listen if any of you hurt you hurt yourselves don't try and like you know don't try and like just play it off or anything if you really hurt yourself uh let us know like i'm here uh everyone else is here for you if someone genuinely creeps you out or something don't wait till the end of the night fucking just let us know and we'll deal with it right <clears throat> and that'll just be the end of it and you know that's a genuine like right there was when i was like oh man now we're starting to feel like a real documentary we're really going to focus on like some of the social aspects in this and then we don't <laughs> right and then we don't follow up with that like me, my questions were, oh man, how does that work? Right? You know, how, how does that process work of like, of like, um, kind of making sure people don't overstep their bounds in VR and stuff like that, especially when you come to something like a strip club or something like that. And like, if someone gets injured, what, what is like, how do you do that? Especially if you're long distance, you may not even be in the same country, right? How do you work that out? And like, those are interesting questions to ask and none of it gets asked, none of it gets answered. And we go to uh, Dragonheart and, you know, she's doing her dance and stuff. And then it basically like in the fastest way possible goes, okay, here's Dragonheart. Her boyfriend is, it's your boy. And tonight is a special night. I think it's his birthday or it's their anniversary or something like that. Uh, they've been with each other for a year or something like that. Um, I think that's what the occasion was. And it's like, no, it wasn't a birthday. Yeah, I think it was like an anniversary type thing, you know? <laughs> and it's like, all right, you know, she's going to do the special dance for him. Uh, the special mating dance for him. Got to, got to attract the other, you know, got to attract your, your mate, you know, um, uh, you know, and it's very like, it's very special to her and special to him. And, you know, she does that for him and, and it's, you know. And that's pretty much what happens, right? Uh, and then we cut to them in like, kind of like a bar, not not this type of bar, but kind of like a like you know a lounging area. And they're playing pool, and they're basically just talking about like how they met and uh, you know what the effects of that have been. And we go into how um, Dragonheart talks about like you know. She was, I think she came out of a breakup or something like that. And she, you know, she was an alcoholic and now she's a recovering alcoholic and how VR chat really helped her like forget about that. And then when she met, it's your boy. Fuck it. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. I'm sorry. Uh, when she met, it's your boy. Um, you know, that really helped her. It, fo it gave her something to focus in on, you know, and VR chat was such a social space that, you know, she didn't need to drink to feel happy. She didn't have the need to drink. You know, she felt content, uh, you know, within within her own, you know, within herself when it comes to this. And it's very nice, right? You learn this about her. And it's nice. First of all, it's very nice that all these people were just willing to share these stories about themselves just in general. Right. And, you know, it was great. 
And that's pretty much what you get from her. I'm trying to remember. Uh, she goes into like a, a kooky story of like how she had a nosebleed one time when she was dancing, and she's like, she's like, okay, uh, I danced through it, and then at the end, she's like, all right, guys, I gotta go. My nose is bleeding, <laughs> right? And that was kind of funny, but um, you know, that's pretty much all we really learned from her. And then we go to it's your boy, and it's your boy, kind of like a same deal with Toaster here. But in a, but in a more direct sense, kind of just goes, yep, I'm the boy of the relationship. I'm a boy. <laughs> right? Uh, we learn, uh, we learn very little about It's Your Boy, honestly. Which is like, if you're coming in with a name like that, you gotta tell me something, my guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh... I'm trying to remember what the hell we even learned about him, right? It, I, we learned, like, maybe two things about him, where it's like, he's very dedicated, you know, to their relationship. He wants to make it work. Um, by the way, these two haven't met in real life or whatever, but they're uh, kind of committing. The whole story arc of them is that they're going to have a wedding in VR, and that's kind of a sign of commitment to try and make it work in the real world, you know? And from what I heard, weddings in VR really don't happen as much anymore uh in the community but that's from what i heard and that was like you know this was only a like this video only came out a year ago and i think it was filmed in 2020 so i'm not really sure but um <laughs> but like uh when it comes to it's your boy we really don't learn much we don't learn much about him at all right and i think same situation like he was kind of quiet kind of recluse and then he met Dragonheart, and he's like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that's it, right? And then we just kind of follow them through the motions, and that's really all we get from that. It's your boy is really, he's a really quiet person. You know, he doesn't speak much. But, uh, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So, you see, like, at this point, you can probably see what I mean by, like, it doesn't feel like a documentary. There's no, there's really no goal here there's no focus like even the focus of following these couples doesn't really have anything happening just it feels like you're just going through the motions and then you know by the way it, they don't do it in order like this they you know they split i just hit my headset they uh splice it together and stuff like that at different moments you know we transition to like what these couples are doing here and there um you know and then uh the one that's probably the most fleshed out, uh, yeah, the most fleshed out, uh, the couple that's the most fleshed out is Ginny and Rhea's death. Now, <laughs> from the name itself, Ray is death. Ray is someone who is death in VR. And it starts with us uh, talking to Ginny. She herself is hard of hearing too. I forgot what the term was called. I think it's, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it was a, uh, like dissociative hearing disorder or something like that but basically her whole thing was uh her whole thing wow that's well, that's a way to put it uh her her um her dis her hearing disability was basically like uh like if basically if sound gets to be too much for her like it clogs in her ear and it's hard for her to focus like all the sound waves just hit her here at once and it can be pretty painful sometimes you know so you know, we talk about them and we start uh, getting introduced to them because Jenny is an instructor for ASL. ASL, that's that's how it is. Yeah, basically sign language in VR chat. And that's another, in my own opinion, that's another world I really want to visit uh, once I get like full body trackers and stuff like that. And like I get the five knuckle or whatever the hell it's called and I can move my fingers individually. Because um, that's very, in my opinion, I think everyone should learn sign language, right? It is... It is pretty like a language that's just visually spoken amongst like everyone like that's a pretty that's pretty good very useful thing to have right you know so i think uh what they're doing is very important but yeah <clears throat> i can't wait for myself to visit a world like that and just kind of just learn from it right and you know so jenny's hard of hearing and she's a deaf instructor uh, deaf instructor and she's a uh, she's a sign language instructor and ray is completely deaf from what i from what i understand i think ray is completely deaf and they are also a, um he is also a uh, sign language instructor right and then you know 
well the first question you may have is like oh man what is the like dude this this seems very useful let's talk about that and they do talk about that a bit you know they talk about how useful it is uh and how uh you know it's very important and stuff like that you know i gotta i'm trying to just reposition myself here you know <laughs> you know and they talk about it a little bit you know but they don't really focus on that and i you know i get it you want to follow the couple aspect but then when you follow the couple aspect you really don't talk about the couple aspect as much as you think they would um what you focus on them is more on their personal lives which here's you know here's the big content warning by the way if you hear things in the background i have a lot of people in my house right now and i have no other time to record this but now so i just i have to make do um <laughs> you know starving artists in his basement feed me please um <laughs> but like but like uh you know you really don't follow their relationship as much as you think it would honestly for some reason like you you would want to you know in this documentary you think you would want to learn a lot about ray and you do learn a lot about ray but you don't see ray as much in this documentary and either it might be because ray was just uncomfortable behind the camera or um or just i i don't know maybe maybe jenny wasn't available the entire time to to you know translate for ray because whenever ray whenever ray speaks you know uh uh, you basically you know ray does the sign language and jenny kind of translates and then the only other time where it doesn't happen is is uh you know you see subtitles down there to see what ray is saying and i don't know why they just didn't do that most of the time you know but whatever <laughs> but like uh but you don't really see ray too much but when you do see ray it counts right it counts a lot and when it comes to these two, they are definitely the most fleshed out out of everyone, but that is both a very good thing and unfortunately kind of a bad thing as well, especially when it comes to a documentary. Um, because you learn about these two and you learn that Jenny and notice how I didn't instantly go into the, you know, into the uh, aspects of their relationship because you don't really learn too much about their relationship. Um... So you go into it, you learn that Jenny's kind of cook uh, a little kooky, you know, she, you know, she's fun loving type of spirit, right? And lack of a, I, like, you don't really get to learn too much about Ray in the sense of their personality. And this is a big, like, what they do here is kind of like a double-edged sword, the way I can explain it very, in a, in a simple sense. So let's just get into it. Again, content, content warning, talking about attempted suicide and death in the family right so we learned that at some point jenny had tried to attempt suicide and you know obviously she failed and uh you know for, for of course for the better and then she learns that like wow i am actually really loved by a lot of people and it's very it's a very nice moment right and the whole entire time i was watching i just wanted to i wanted to hop in vr chat and and go like i gotta find her i gotta find her i gotta find her i gotta find her and just give her a fucking hug <laughs> and be like oh i love you right but um but uh you know you learn that about jenny and you learn about you know kind of like these personal struggles she's been dealing with and and then uh you know how do i transition from that right you know, you learn that, and you learn her attempt to suicide, and you learn how she realizes that, you know, she, you know, she has a lot of people that love her, and how, like, if she were to leave the world in such a way, it would really affect people heavily, and, you know, it, you know, it opens her eyes, you know, <laughs> it's very, it's very difficult to talk about this, uh, you know, it opens her eyes, in a sense, and you see that she now sees the world for a brighter place, you know, and she's really happy and thankful for the people around her, and that's amazing, right? And then later on, we learn that um, that Ray's death, we learn that his brother actually committed suicide, you know. And it's a very, it's a very, how do you, how do you say it without just saying it's a very sad moment, right? Ray talks about it, and then after that, there's a toll scene where. Ray goes to, you know, basically light a lantern for his brother, and, um, and, uh, 
I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. In my mind, I'm like, I'm like, Ray's a guy, right? Ray, Ray's definitely a guy, because I think Ray has a female avatar. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I think Ray's a guy. I'm pretty sure Ray's a guy. Um, and uh, you know, Ray has this whole moment where he's giving like, he's basically giving his uh, heartfelt thoughts to his brother, how how he's like, I'm sorry that, you know, I'm sorry that we couldn't be there for you as much as we needed to be. And, you know, I worry about you and mom worries about you and we love you dearly. Me, me, your, you know, me, your family, your friends, everyone, we miss you very much. And, you know, and we hope that you're just at peace now and stuff like that. And it's, you know, it's very like, <laughs> I'm kind of tearing up right now, just talking about it. Um, you know, and it's very heartfelt and it's very courageous for these people to talk about this. But, and when it comes to this, this is when people for the most part this is definitely the mo the you know the big moment in the documentary and if you ask anybody they go they go that was definitely the part that needed to be said and needed to be watched and you know that was the thing that really like needed you know i don't want to say it needed to be focused on per se but in terms of you know seeing vr and you know the social aspects and how it affects us and stuff like that like that is something that definitely you know needed needed to be there right but then this comes kind of as a double-edged sword because at that point throughout the rest of the film you know even before that you don't really learn too much about them you know like you learn a lot right then and there right because that's definitely very heavy but you don't beyond that beyond like maybe Beyond maybe like one scene in the beginning where Jenny's going across the lockers and she's like, oh, here are the lockers that belong to these people, right? And she's, you know, talking about that. That's the most, that's the most you get about them outside of like this very, very sad, you know, moment. And what ends up happening in this situation is that these two, unfortunately, they like, there's, you know, how do I explain it? They definitely, you know, they are people, right? Let's let's start with that. They are people. Let me explain myself here. But unfortunately, in the documentary, they begin to feel more like characters, right? In a sense that when it comes to those two, be like the only thing I really know here is just the struggles they've been going through in life, right? Like besides the beginning part where she's looking at the lockers, and besides them celebrating the new year you don't get anything beyond their personality besides like besides anything that's connected to their struggles in life you only get the sad it feels like and you know when it comes to it i can't like when i think about jenny and ray it's like what do i know about them well jenny's hard of hearing ray is deaf jenny attempted suicide ray brother died of suicide you know, it's very, it's very courageous for them to share these stories, but that's the main thing I know about them. We barely touch the subject of them being a couple. And at the same time, like, you know, th the only other like thing that we know is like, like they hung out, you know, they celebrate New Year's in VR. Uh, Ray, Ray, you know, has these friends that are like, crazy right you know quote unquote crazy you know kind of kooky and zany a little bit and then besides that i think there's like a like one other moment that i'm really struggling to even remember right now because it was on the tip of my tongue but i just forgot about it honestly i literally just remembered and then immediately forgot about it um shit what was it what was it damn it uh fuck um oh yeah, yeah yeah now i remember um you know when you're introduced to them she talks about uh you know them you know them teaching sign language to people and it's like that's great that's amazing that speaks wonders for your for your um that speaks wonders for the type of person you are but at the same time that's also connected to the fact that you know that's also connected to you know something unfortunate where it's like they are instructors why are they instructors because ray is deaf 
and because Jenny's hard of hearing. And they want to share this with other people because it, you know, it, it, it's a struggle that they've been going through their whole entire life. And the more that people know it, the easier life becomes. And it's like, that's also connected to misfortune, right? So everything I know about them just is all connected to misfortune, you know? And it's really, we don't learn too much about them outside of that. And in that sense, they kind of become characters in this whole documentary because it's like, well, it's like Dust Bunny, Dust Bunny and Toaster, they're a couple, they're a little wacky and kooky, right? Um, you know, Dragonheart, Dragonheart and It's Your Boy, you know, they're a couple and they're more kind of straightforward, right? And, you know, when you compare them to Toaster and Dust Bunny, they're not as zany and kooky. They're more straightforward and a little bit more serious. And then you get to Ray and Jenny and it's and it's like, what about their relationship? I like you, you re they love each other and that's all you really get. Everything else you know about them is connected to sadness and it really sucks because it's like at the end of the movie I walk away and I'm like and I'm like man that moment with Ray is very impactful and you know I just I just want you know I want to take both of them and hug them and tell them and tell them you know tell them to be strong and tell them life is going to be hard but you can persevere through it right you know you can become stronger from it but at the same time when you walk away from watching the film all you can say is like, what What was Ginny and Ray? And then you just look at it and you're like, well, they were the sad ones. And I, there's nothing else to say about that, sadly. And no pun intended or anything like that. You know, this is a really serious topic. Um, there's nothing else to say about that. It's like everything that happens in there is connected to their struggles and their misfortune. And I really, I really don't, I really don't, I wish I knew something outside of that, you know? I wish I knew something outside of that. I wish I knew more about them away from that, you know? I want to know them as people. I don't want to know them just for their struggles. And that's like, and that was the real problem with that because it's definitely the most impactful moment in the documentary. But that's like, that's, that's it, you know? And at that point, you're like, this doesn't really feel like a documentary, right? You know, <laughs> everything. And then there's, there's other, you know, and I really like, first of all, I don't even know how to transition from this topic, but it's. Whenever I hear people talk about it and they're like, they were definitely the best part of the film. It's like, yeah, it was, it was very heartfelt, but you, you don't, you don't learn anything out of this, you know, like, like even when they talk about, um, even when they talk about like how VR chat has been a help for them, it's a very like quick kind of side note thing, you know, right? Like, I, I, I really, I want to know more about them as people, right? Rather than learn about them as these characters of sadness. And it sucks. It sucks so much because, you know, it takes a lot of courage to talk about that. But when you walk away from the film, you're like, that's all I know you for. It's everything connected to your misfortunes. And... Uh, I want to, I want to know you, I want to know more about you as a person away from all that, you know, focus on that, right? So like, you, you see where I'm coming from here? It's, it's really like, how do you, you know, how do you really, how do you really talk about that? How do you really talk around that? Right. And unfortunately, they just, you know, they when I say they come off as characters, I don't I don't mean like they come as characters in the storybook. 
right to me they come off as characters because you have other people where it's like yeah we don't learn too much about them but you still see a lot about their personalities and stuff like that and this one it's like you only see this one side of you only see one side of the coin over here right you only see all the bad <laughs> and that sucks that that honestly sucks they become people of misfortune rather than just you know people in general um so that's pretty much what happens like when we when we follow these three couples and at the end it's at the end you know all the couple from my knowledge anyways again this was this came out like a year ago um <coughs> in the end it's like all these couples are growing strong hopefully they're still going strong today um you know dust bunny and toaster can't wait to see each other again uh you know Dragonheart and it's your boy want to make it work and you know they they're committed to it right they want to they want to make this they want to make this work and then when it and jenny and ray is a couple like i that that's the end point on there jenny and ray is a couple i i don't you don't even know if they met each other in real life or not they don't even talk about that like I, 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 fuck man i really don't you know what i mean right i i'm speechless here um so there's that and it's like it's like you call like you call this a documentary and you film it from an aspect of no of no like real viewpoint or anything like that you know like i want to make it clear having a viewpoint in this doesn't mean that you can't be neutral about whatever it is you want to talk about but when it comes to something like virtual reality where it's just kind of a you know it, it's a big thing to it's a big new thing that most people don't really understand uh you know you either have to come in from the viewpoint of someone who doesn't know about vr or the viewpoint of someone who does know about vr and you know and, and you know fucking <laughs> again there's not really much to say unless you unless you watch the movie you understand what i'm talking about um, but at the same time, when it comes to this whole neutrality thing, there's these other moments in the documentary, right? Let's talk about these other moments. So there's three kind of, uh, four kind of standout moments, eh, five, five, six separate moments where it's kind of away from the three main couples. You know, the first one is you see uh, a group of people hopping in like a car in VR and the guy driving. He's like, I never drove drove in real life before. So this is kind of the first time or whatever. And for, you know, when you're watching that, when you're watching that, like the only thing I can think about during this whole entire scene is like, oh, wow, VR can have really practical uses and stuff like that. You know, instead of hopping, like if we get if we get like if we can make the sim the simulation strong enough, <laughs> if we can, you know. We can make it so that when you head to the DMV or some bullshit and you need to take your driver's test, right, after you're done doing the written test, instead of sitting in the car with some crockety old person fucking yelling at you the entire time while you're trying to take your driving test, fucking we can just strap the headset on you and grade you right then and there, right? You know, if we can, if we can get it working enough. And that's pretty good, right? That's pretty amazing. So that's kind of the takeaway from that and it's crazy because they never they you know again no questions are ever asked in in this uh in this documentary so it's something that you kind of have to infer for yourself you get to see the practicality of vr and how, how that can really help us in in the long term then after that we transition to some b-roll of like of you know like uh of you know one of the worlds in vr chat i guess it's primarily a bunch of japanese people and you know it's like a bar and then you see you know you see people talking people drinking uh you know and then you see a guy sleeping on the corner and it's pretty much it <laughs> it's pretty much it that's the that's the second moment right <laughs> nothing gets qu nothing gets questioned nothing gets asked and it's just like hey man look at the world of vr chat there's guys in the corner fucking sleeping probably passed out drunk in his room with a headset on his face and eh, whatever right and you know when it when it started i was like oh man are we gonna are we gonna see the social aspects like like through the lens of a different country right that that'll be pretty cool but no no we never it's just there right I, it's fucking why and then uh i forgot which one comes first so i think the next moment that comes is there's this group of friends right uh they're kind of like they're in the you know they're they're in the woods <laughs> how do i how do i do the fucking signs you know 
fucking they're you know they're in the woods right this is peace signs this is the best i can do for quotes they're they're in the woods um and like <laughs> and like they're kind of just talking about how like vr has really helped them you know be more accepted and be more comfortable in their own skin and stuff like that like instead of walking up to someone being like i don't know like a, a short like a short fat person or something and just instantly getting judged then and there like you see people walking around as fucking link from zelda or like a fucking you know or a fucking furry or some shit and it's like people can really be their true selves and for the most part people get to know you for you rather than um rather than uh you know instantly judge you off your looks right and then they also talk about how uh how it's been really helpful for them um you know just claiming their own identity and like struggling with their with their own uh you know for for all you people who are afraid of it being too woke you know uh how it how it helps them struggle uh how it helps them struggle how it helps them with the struggle of like you know their own identity and their own uh, gender and stuff like that and that was a really cool moment but it was a passing moment and we never talk about that ever again <laughs> fucking no it, it's a documentary focusing on the social aspects of, of reality and vr and all that bullshit but we never never talk about that again nope no we don't fuck it who cares move on right and then we get this and then here's the other kind of snippet that happened again i don't remember the orders of these but then we get this uh we, we get this like short little focus on this comedy group on this improv comedy group in vr and they do like these comedy nights or whatever and it's like it's like a, a i don't know like a fucking like we spend a grand total of like maybe a minute with these people and it's like it's like all right we're gonna we're gonna do some skits tonight you know well not skits we're gonna do improv tonight or whatever you know we're gonna yes and it and then the scene that they show is like during one of the jokes or whatever uh the person who had full body tracking it just kind of glitches out and they go flying off into the fucking into the atmosphere right and it's like that's the that's the shot you chose to use for the movie okay whatever i guess nothing else gets axed for that we literally spend like a minute with them because i think they use it as a transition to move back over to either Dragonheart and Ninja Boy or Jenny and Ray. I forgot who they transitioned it over to. I think it's one of those two. But, um, you know, it's fucking... It's fucking... Like, you see what I mean here? Right? And then we get another transitional moment. Right? Here's another one. Oh, actually, I think I think there's one that happens before this. There's a moment where someone... I They don't tell you who it is, I think. There's a moment when someone basically there's there people are celebrating New Year's and someone gives like a nice little speech about like COVID's been pretty hard on us and you know VR has been uh, VR chat has been really helpful for our sanity and stuff like that and you know that they that they never thought they would care about just the person next to them walking down the street you know they would never care about the uh, the cashier putting their groceries in the bag or whatever they would never really think about uh, fucking I don't know the uh the fucking person flipping burgers in the back of a goddamn wendy's right you know and they're like vr chat has really opened my eyes to just look around myself in the real world and be like oh this whole entire time i just never really looked at these people and thought like to me everyone was just a passerby right uh but they're like vr chat has opened my eyes to and i've met so many people through this that have like interesting stories and stuff like that you know interesting story you know they're you know rather than just being someone i walk by on the street these are people who have lives right you know and <laughs> and like that's the gist of it right and they're celebrating new year's and then we move on from that we move on from that we spend like a grand total of like maybe what three minutes talking about that and then we move on from that who cares fucking the important questions, right, about society. <laughs> How is this a documentary? I don't get it. Um, and then after that, we transition over to the club space in VR chat. And you're like, oh, man, are we going to ask questions about, like, how it is to, like, DJ in VR chat or, like, what the club, you know, what the club life is kind of like 
um you know in vr chat and like if you're someone who you know who's, who's a full body dancer in vr chat we're gonna ask questions there and it's like nope no one talks in this session we only see b-roll and <laughs> and then there's this uh, fucking and then there's this moment where they're in like i forgot the name of the club or whatever i i honestly do i don't know what was it like the ghost face club or some bullshit i don't know um fucking there's this moment where someone's playing the piano and excuse me hand hand do you want to pick up something what did you want to pick up what the fuck all right there's this moment where you know someone's playing the piano in vr in the club and people are listening and they're playing they're playing the song that haunts me because i fucking hear it everywhere i go nowadays uh, for the past fucking five years fucking claire de lune they're playing fucking claire de lune right you know the dun 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 you know they're playing claire de lune and it's this it's this basic b-roll shot of like the person playing piano and then everyone else in the background looking at them and the frame rate of this person's computer is just dying because a bunch of snowflakes are falling from the ceiling or some shit the camera's not steady or anything and he's doing like these scrolling shots but like he's not using the steady cam or anything like that so it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be like this quiet moment of like see people gather in vr right and it's like what the f you're playing clear de lune this person's on the piano these people are in the background quiet uh you're trying to do like this nice b-roll shot but your computer can't handle what's happening so you're just filming this at sub 15 frames and uh, uh, <laughs> you didn't ask anybody anybody about anything in the club space right yeah no questions were asked like are you a dj in real life did you did you learn how to dj uh, because of VR chat or anything like that, or like, you know, have there's been any moments where someone got too rowdy in the club space or something like that, you know, any fucking thing, right? But I don't know. 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 I really don't know why that moment was there. And it's so weird because they end the moment off with like this very like, kind of creepy like moment of like walking out of the club's like entrance and then the door slams shut right and it's this big like booming noise and you're like oh man are we gonna are we gonna talk about like the dark side of vr chat of like you know some people who use vr chat as kind of like an excuse for substance abuse and stuff like that the clubbing scene of vr chat because the way, because the way it's the way they fucking filmed it was like, now we're about to talk about some heavy hitting shit, you know, here's the beauty, but let's talk about the dark underside of it, right? And then the door slams shut and you're like, oh, we're going to get into something here. But no, nope. no, nope, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, not at all, not once, not twice, not, in the fuck, not at all. And then we see, so we see the guys in the car again, fucking on a, on a dinosaur safari. We, we don't there, there's nothing there's nothing there right there nothing happens um no, nothing really like you see like do you understand what i mean now about how you're just going through the motions come on come on Ugh, i keep hitting the barrier of my uh <laughs> of my play space that's why i'm like freezing all over the place but it's like do you now see how we're going through the motions right like there's there's nothing there's nothing to be said here you know and i don't it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a documentary right it doesn't feel like a documentary it feels like someone's just filming shit. And like, I, I want to make it very clear here. 
I'm not, there's no like hatred or resentment towards the director of this, right? Oh, by the way, if you haven't watched the movie, I'm pretty sure at some point you're asking, oh, so do we get to see these people in the real world? Nope. The whole tagline about this thing, the whole, the main like hard hitting point about that is that it's all filmed in virtual reality. And I get it, right? It would be like, especially after uh, seeing Ginny and Ray open their hearts to us, right? You know, just having the general courage, knowing that the potential of millions are going to watch and listen to their stories. You know, so like if you were to put a camera on them in the real world on top of putting a camera on them within their, you know, within the virtual space where they can truly be themselves, it would be too much for people. And I totally understand that. You know, like, I will, uh, I would have loved to learn more about them. Like, hey, who are you in real life? What, like, what is your job? What do you, what do you, you know, what do you do? I got to move over to the side because fucking, <laughs> I'm like hitting the barrier of my play space and it's causing my character to like just pause and shit for some reason. Um, but like, you know, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, like, I feel like there's definitely some other things I can talk about here in this fucking, you know, film, but I, most of the main points I think I've gotten across already, right? At the end of the day, I want to make it very clear. At the end of the day here, if you're someone who likes VR chat, should you watch this? I honestly think yes, right? If you're someone who's a little bit interested in VR, should you watch this? I still think yes because it's better to go in knowing about something knowing a little bit more about something than not knowing at all right and at least and at least here here's the big ups for it right throughout this whole entire throughout besides like maybe like the the cheesy moments of like of fucking you know the characters just doing like these very very direct things in the sense of like you know chasing each other around the field or fucking on the roller coaster or some I, when i whenever i say this i feel like i feel like i feel like it's just me talking shit about dust, uh, dust bunny and toaster which i don't, <laughs> i don't want to do that right you know but they they were definitely the ones that you saw the most when it came to like all the heavily directed shit you know, when it came to, you know, the lovey-dovey, let's, let's, you know, let's sit in each other's laps and shit. I mean, uh, we all, we got to see, like, a birthday celebration and, like, a wedding, uh, the wedding for, um, for, uh, It's Your Boy and Dragonheart. And I will say the moment in the wedding is, you know, the moment in the wedding where, uh, you know, Dragonheart's friend shows up. I think it's Dragonheart's friend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Dragonheart's friend. Where, you know, she shows up and she's like, and she's like, you know she's pouring her heart out to her in the sense of like i'm very happy for you and i'm very happy you you found someone like not not that it's just like some guy you met on the street or something where it's like you found someone that you connected to beyond just the physical realm right so that was very nice that was very heartfelt and i i like that right you know and then uh and then again, with with Jenny and Ray, like we, I don't think we ever even see like a moment of of Ray of like of Ray just like kind of hanging out. I don't think we ever see a moment of that. We see Jenny a couple of times. Like there's the I'm scratching my ear by the way. There's the uh, there's the there's the whole you know her on like the ATV I think, and she's watching the clouds and stuff like that. You know, and you know. It's a documentary. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain this shit. I really don't. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're, it's bad. Like, it's nice that those are the closest thing to like the whole. Uh, what the hell is my point? Here? My point here was like, it's nice that the focus on this wasn't like, here's the meme culture of the chat. Here's the Ugandan knuckles running around. You know, it, it show me the way, my queen. Right? You know, fucking. It's nice that that we didn't that that wasn't like a thing focused on. That's like here's what VR is all about. It's about being a dickhead, right? And and about a bunch of children just doing the things that are the funniest shit ever, man. Like I mean, you know, 
And then he said he was a pickle and it was the funniest shit I've ever seen. You like, you know what I mean? It's nice that that wasn't the direction here. But at the same time, the direction you took was aimless, to say the least, right? Uh, you know, and it's a sense where, like, in, in terms of, like, you know, Ray's big moment and stuff like that, this is definitely a film of the highest highs and the lowest lows. There never feels like a moment in between where it's like, oh, that was kind of okay to watch, you know? Or maybe I didn't agree with that a little bit, or maybe, oh, I agree with that a little bit more than the other thing, but not wholeheartedly. There was no, there was no moments like that. It was either like, here's a moment of you just don't give a fuck, <laughs> right? And here's a moment of like, you really care. And it was just, that's how it went, right? Whenever it reached its lows, it was always the lowest low. And whenever it reached its highs, it was always the greatest of highs. There was never any like in between moment in that film, at least for me. Right. And again, isn't that important in a documentary? Shouldn't a documentary get you to ask questions and wonder and learn? There's no questions to be asked here. So... You know, thanks for coming to my TED talk about my fucking my my connection is like getting worse. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming to my TED talk about this movie. Right. But, you know, if you're someone who hasn't watched it and you, you're in the space of VR chat, I still think you should give it a watch. Take it at your own pace. Right. Don't think it's don't think it's like a must watch. Don't think you have to waste your time watching Thor Love and Thunder because that movie's garbage. <laughs> Talking shit about the MCU. Yeah. But, uh, you know, don't think it's something like that where it's like, I got to watch this. It's the hottest thing. I know. Take your time watching it. If, you, if it takes you like a course of fucking three weeks to watch the movie, watch it. If you're someone who, you know, knows about VR and you're in the realm of VR chat. If you're someone who's interested in it, you can check it out. You can skim through it right you know uh you don't have to really commit and if you're someone who doesn't care about vr and you're like oh this seems like an interesting thing i'm gonna tell you right now you're not gonna care by the end of it you're not gonna care about the end of it there, there's nothing there for you right it's so like this movie is so aimless and so and everything feels so disconnected and <sighs> And it's called a documentary, and I guess that the that's the closest thing you can call it. But it's it's not at the end. At the end, of my fucking avatar is losing its shit. At the end of the day, it's it's not a documentary, right? It's just not. So overall, I'm hap I'm happy that I did watch this movie. My yeah, my avatar is losing its shit, right? I'm, I keep freezing all over the place. I don't know what's causing that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I am happy that I watched this movie, but at the same time, um, it's not vitally important. Nothing, nothing of importance is really axed here. Like, the most important you get out of it is, uh, it's like, there's potential for VR and... There's potential for relationships in VR, you know, and long distance relationships. You get that out of that and you get, and you know, you get the whole thing from, from Ray and Jenny where it's like, there are real people out there who, you know, are dealing with real shit. And that's pretty much all you get from that. But that's something that a lot of people can just infer from just looking at VR in general, you didn't have to make a whole hour and 30 of it, right? <laughs> you know? Um, and if you were going to make an hour and 30 of it, do a deeper dive than what you did. But that's that's how it went. That's how it went. It says a lot when there's people on YouTube who've definitely done video topics that give you more information than this whole entire documentary did and honestly it's and this was entered this was entered in the sundance festival right how how did the audience receive that <laughs> what was the reception to that 
like live at the festival what like i have a feeling like half like maybe 25 percent of the room was like yeah man you go and like the rest were like i don't un- what i don't understand what just happened <laughs> like i understand a part of what happened but i don't understand what happened right you know i have more questions you gave me more questions than answers right so you know there's that uh <laughs> So I hope I, I I honestly don't know how long this video is gonna be. I tend to ramble on, but I wanted to. I really I just needed to talk about this fucking film because I was intrigued by it. And then I remember asking people in VR chat like, "Have you watched this? What do you think about this?" And a lot like there was a handful of people that are like, "Oh man, there were moments that are so beautiful." You know, there's there's definitely some cringy moments in it because it's VR chat. Everything in VR chat is cringe at some point. But then there were other people that's like, oh, I fucking hated it. It was, what? <laughs> you know? There were people that was like, N- like, it's a documentary, but questions didn't get asked, right? Nothing got answered. Nothing got asked. Nothing was learned. Um, you know? So, but again, that's the, that was the viewpoint of people who already play VR chat. You know, if you went in from the viewpoint of someone who never touched VR, maybe you get something else, right? And that's the point. That's the point of a documentary is to kind of, you know, look at my ears. It's the kind of, uh, <laughs> it's the kind of, you know, present these questions for people, right? And give them information regarding these questions. And, you know, give them, give them information that's neutral. Give them the facts instead of the opinions, right? But it's all there is to talk about with this movie at least at this point in my mind because if I had any other moments that I wanted to talk about they're gone <laughs> they're they're deleted from my brain just bow gone right um so yeah that's it right <laughs> I think at some point I I don't want to don't want to set it in stone because I'm not you know I can just be talking out my ass here but at some point I would like to find a way to do some sort of follow-up on this or to kind of like go around and ask my own questions in VR, right? So maybe I might do that in the future. Maybe, you know, if I have time, right? Maybe make a little docu-series and do what I think would be the best way to handle something like this. Um, But, you know, that's just an idea I have. I might pull, I might go through with it. I might not, right? I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm just a dickhead with a headset and a camera. But, um... You know, tip for the movie, right? If you, uh, if you, first of all, I wanna, I wanna hear what the fuck you guys think in the comments, honestly. Like, l- legit, tell me what the hell you thought about the movie. Tell, like, not just what you thought about the movie, but tell me, like, what you thought when you heard about the movie, what you thought going into the movie, what you thought during the movie, what you thought after the movie, and then what you thought a fucking week later after the movie, right? Like, and whether you agree with me or disagree, again, this is all my opinion, but at the same time, you know, at the same time, isn't that with what a documentary is supposed to do? Have people agree and disagree and ask questions, right? So, you know, (laughs) and uh, if you haven't watched the movie and you have hbo max it's there on hbo max i think you can watch it on youtube as well i'm not sure uh and yeah that's pretty much it regarding all that shit um i'm happy that i watched it but i realized that it wasn't necessary for me to watch it i mean let's face it no movie is necessary for anyone to watch but still it wasn't like it wasn't something that gave me more insight to something that I that I you know that I didn't know about you know (laughs) but um yeah if you want to check out come on hand work come on VR work hi hello someone's dropping stuff in my house they're making a lot of noise um if you want to watch my other videos or whatever on my channel you know I do playthroughs on the YouTube Right, and I do streams right now on Twitch. I'm going through Batman Arkham Knight, doing a hundred percent playthrough on the Nightmare Difficulty New Game Plus, right? You know, all the whole shebang and stuff like that. 
you know, I have other playthroughs on my channel. Come on, come on, come on, work controller. I have other playthroughs on my channel, right? And then, uh, you know, there's like another video that I did in VR, which, you know, was my, you know, it was my first time filming like VR chat, so it's a little iffy, but basically it's like me, you know, what a standard like six hours in VR chat is like for me. You know, just like a bunch of highlights. I think that video went, went like, over an hour i think it might be like an hour and 20 minutes or something yikes because again i had to grab the best like some best clips from from uh you know for my adventure in vr in vr chat for like six hours you know and even then that wasn't the best of the best you know some things didn't make it because you know it was my first time filming in vr and getting the camera in the right position was a really hard thing to do especially when you're actively hanging out with a bunch of people um you know but it was all good times. That was amazing. So if you just want to check that out and just see a bunch of clips out of context, then go ahead. There's there's that video. And yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it for this. This is a very long-winded uh, discussion, <laughs> topic, talk about, right? Um, but yeah, so I'm going to leave now because my, he my fucking connection is getting all shitty and you know <laughs> and uh hopefully i see you guys in the next video right so as always stay happy stay healthy and take care i'm a chef chef what else should i be please don't take